patient for arthritis regularly, a lot of old arthritic animals. Um, we had to modify their diet some time. They don't digest well, they don't absorb well. When the teeth start going down, they have to get soft food. So pay attention to geriatric medicine. So routine exams, we often, you know, part of a routine exam can be routine blood work. In many instances, drawing blood from a lemur, like drawing blood from a dog or a cat. We need to draw blood from a dolphin. I had no clue that's what it should be. Birds, you'll learn how to draw blood from poultry, but a lot of birds are different. Jugular vein is a great place, but we only have one jugular vein. Some animals have two jugular veins. If you didn't know that, you can spend a lot of time looking on the wrong side. Some animals pose all kinds of problems. This is like this is when you see your red that you get blood sample. And you learn all sorts of tricks and all sorts of uniqueness. So we talked about how you can lump things, and the things you can't lump. Things you learn from experience or someone else's experience. All right, let's talk about some specific situations that are similar and different. You all know what tuberculosis is. It's a mycobacterial bacterial disease of the respiratory system. Pretty unusual in humans now, still present in developing countries. Causes a type of pneumonia that's usually chronic and if not treated, fatal. Very unusual in developing countries because they're wounds TB tested and everyone in cases are either isolated or treated. It's a manageable disease if you're aware of it. Tuberculosis is not uncommon in animals. Cattle get tuberculosis. You do a lot of TB testing from livestock if you work in livestock. Primates get tuberculosis. Now, primates do not get tuberculosis in the wild. They get it in captivity, they get it from people. So, standard protocol routine exam is uh, TB testing in those species. So, all the animal species that come and go from the zoo get a TB test, just like you do a cow. All the leaf, all the primates, the zoo get TB tested too. But, you know, when you get a TB test, you get it on your arm. On primates, you don't have to go on the island. Same test, same reaction. The difference is a primate will come up and threaten you when you come to the cage. And you can see the eyelid. It would be really hard to see the arm of a primate. And if they get an extra eyelid, it will swell so the eye will be partially closed. So it's a really easy way to tell. It's, it's, I should say it's a way you can read a skin test on a primate you wouldn't be able to do uh, in a person. So those are kind of routine types of tuberculosis. Ten or so years ago, we discovered that elephants get tuberculosis. Interestingly, they get human tuberculosis. They get it from people. And it took a long time for people to figure out that elephants were getting tuberculosis. And it's a disease that happens slowly and progresses slowly. And by the time, often by the time you diagnose it, it's in advanced stages. It turns out in most of the cases of elephant TB is from circus elephants, and they got it from people. So you would think they would get cattle tuberculosis, and in fact get human tuberculosis. The skin test doesn't work. There's no blood in the elephant. The skin is thin enough to have a reaction. So we have to do trunk washes, squirt sterile saline into the, into the nose, shake it around, and blow it out, and you're doing culture. So now zoos do TB tests on elephants once a year. And I, TB in zoo elephants is very rare. It does occur occasionally, but it's usually performing in elephants or private animals. So this is anything you have a handle on tuberculosis? Fish get tuberculosis too. They get a completely different kind. In fact, fish tuberculosis is really common. Uh, it happens in wild fish and in hobby fish or zoo fish. It just causes lumps and bumps in the skin. It's not usually, uh, it's not a respiratory disease. They don't have lumps. Um, it's a different kind of tuberculosis, but it's really common in fish. And birds get tuberculosis, and they get a different kind. It's not a respiratory disease in birds. It's a GI disease. They get chronic and diarrhea, and you lose weight, and they can't absorb things, and they eventually die from it. You treat the same kind of disease, you treat it completely differently, you test for it differently, and you can find it differently in every species. Okay, okay bird that. Kookaburra? Kookaburra, that's pretty close. It's a Micronesian kingfish, or same family. Micronesian kingfishers are extinct in the wild, and it all means it's about 30 years ago or so, they live in Guam, and I live in Guam. Um, zoos realized the populations were declining. They went to Guam, they captured 20, brought them into captivity, learned how to breed them in captivity, went back to Guam to get more, and they were gone. So in Guam, based unfortunately due to military action, a snake had been entered. So Guam had no native snakes. There were none there. But uh, there was an Air Force base there, and air transport from Asia to through Guam to the United States had inadvertently introduced the brown tree snake to Guam that basically ate half the bird species in Guam. There were about 20 species, 11 were extinct because of this introduced snake. These birds had never evolved with snakes, they had no reaction to them. They would sit on the branch when the snake crawled up and ate them. So it was extinct in the wild, there's only in this. So more 
lumping, <coughs> splitting and lumping. They said big cats are like little cats. Cheetahs are kind of on the margin of cats. Um, you recognize the one on the right? Ever see a cat with a, a respiratory infection? You have it, you will. This is really common. This is probably caused by herpes virus. There's a couple of viruses, mostly herpes viruses. This is something your cats vaccinate for every year. Cat respiratory disease is a big part of pet practice. Snotty nose, weepy eyes, sometimes they get oral ulcers and sent to the cheetahs when they can. So they're not birds, they don't want to eat. In domestic, domestic cats, it's, you just manage them, you, know, you treat them for the symptoms, like when you have a cold, they don't want to eat. Support them for a few days, infection usually goes away. You vaccinate your cats regularly, it doesn't happen too much. Have them slaughtered in animal shelters and calories, we have lots of cats and lots of exposure. So big cats get the same sort of disease, you manage them the same way, except cheetahs. This is what happens when cheetahs get from these virus infections. So this started, you know, the eyes, just like that cat you saw in the picture. And for some reason, cheetahs don't adapt to the virus well, and they get these overwhelming, also very weak lesions. In fact, the cats have a new nice They finally figured out what was causing it, and they found a way to treat it, and we were able to, this is the same cat, we were able to get rid of the virus, this is all replaced by scar tissue. It didn't progress, so it's not a pretty cat, but it's still functioning too. So, as you see, that we understand well in cats. We say, gee, it's the same in lions and tigers. We have advantages. It's a new species, but we haven't really studied it before. And it cause completely different, different reactions. We thought initially it was a different virus. We tried to prove it was a different virus. It's the same virus. It's the house cat virus. They probably get the house cats. But for some reason, it already means this and doesn't react the same way. So, again, just when you think you have it all figured out, they tell you a new form. Black neighbor, one of my favorite species. I would be very impressed if anyone could tell me what this disease is. In fact, most of my zoo colleagues can't tell me what this disease is. This is a metabolic bone disease. This is bone. So knees and ankles get these gigantic swellings. It also happens in the wrists. Um, I'm not really sure why. This happened when I was in St. Louis. We had two family lines, so genetic. We had 20 animals and two family lines, all related. 18 to 20 were male, and they all got this disease, and they all eventually died. No idea what caused it, some genetic defect. We work with, with human bone specialists and genetic disease specialists, and we decided it was something to do with abnormal kidney function, changing the mineral metabolism. That's not big, that's about how much we understood. So these cases happened over a period of 10 years, and we've never seen a case since. And there are all these bizarre little quirks in the zoo business because we're dealing with unusual animals and unusual situations. 